And the U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, he is in Pyongyang, North Korea right now, his second trip to North Korea in recent weeks. He was there also over the Easter holiday. Right now he's finalizing the preparations for President Trump's upcoming summit. Trump says the exact date and location will be announced soon after this trip, likely to be in early or mid-June, according to the president's own estimate. The Secretary of State outlining the agenda and what can be negotiated. Let Plans are being made. Relationships are building. Hopefully a deal will happen. And with the help of China, South Korea, and Japan, a future of great prosperity and security can be achieved for everyone. Let's turn live now to our international senior international affairs correspondent, Owen Altman. Owen, give us a sense. When do we think this summit will take place? What are the parameters for this historic meeting between the president and Kim Jong-un? Well, Jeff, still no word on when the summit will take place. You know, there had been reports, unconfirmed reports, that it would happen just before the G7 summit. That's scheduled for early June in Quebec. And so this, this summit could take place in Singapore just before that. But again, it's really not known. It may be announced after this trip to Pyongyang by Mike Pompeo. That might be one of the details, pretty important detail, that they might want to nail down and announce. Again, Mike Pompeo might also leave with, on, with him on his plane those three Americans that have been detained in North Korea. Of course, they were scheduled to be freed, or reported to be able to be freed last week, and that didn't happen. That would be seen as a goodwill gesture in this part of the world. We'd call it a confidence-building mechanism given by North Korea ahead of this summit. But as for the parameters, look, Donald Trump has been clear that he wants to see a comprehensive final deal with North Korea giving up its nuclear weapons and the sanctions not lifted until that happens. To say the least, that's pretty ambitious. So again, the question is whether Trump would settle for something less, something more incremental, and then to come back with another summit and more diplomacy to follow. Again, traditionally, that's not how these things are done. Traditionally, the summit of heads of state and heads of government happens to iron out the details and the deal. Donald Trump has decided to move on a non-traditional path. It has to be said, a lot of the doom and gloom predictions made when the summit was announced haven't really come to pass, at least not yet. All right, Owen Alter, and breaking it down for us live in uh, Herzliya at a very important conference. Thank you so much, Owen. Let me turn back in the studio. Mohammed, what the implica could the implications be of Trump withdrawing from the Iran pact? It was a deal negotiated by a previous uh, a president, a predecessor. How could that impact a future deal with North Korea? Greatly. I think what happened last night is going to make the North Korean leadership uh, ask for more guarantees from the current administration. What would happen once President Trump is no longer a president? Who would, you know, would this deal be honored by future presidents? This is one of the big issues about uh, this move and this step by President Trump, that the credibility of the U.S. is on the line. You know, when people get into agreements and accords with the government, they believe that it's going to be respected regardless. And what happened yesterday is putting a dent in the credibility of the United States government, not so much President Donald Trump, but the U.S. government in, a, in, in, in withholding and respecting its uh, responsibilities once it signs a deal. And that's what's going to happen now in North Korea. He, you know, the, the president, Kim Jong-un, will ask for guarantees, great guarantees, uh, to protect his life, to protect his uh, own deal, and to protect uh, everything that he's giving up. Uh, in, in return for whatever he's getting, are those giving you know are those uh, you know handouts or, or agreements going to uh, be respected for the duration of President Trump's presidency or forever? So on, on the other hand, it appears quite likely that uh, Trump's decision on the Iran deal was perhaps inspired by the fact that his very aggressive stance on the Korea issue seems to have triggered some progress, and that is something that uh, obviously is supported by Prime Minister Netanyahu here in Israel. The belief that you have to take a very tough stance with a country like Iran with these kinds of regimes and that if you apply more pressure, that will eventually be the breakthrough moving forward. If we go back to the early 2000s, the Bush administration pulled out of an agreement that was, uh, you know, signed by the Clinton administration with North Korea. What happened? More than 40 nuclear heads uh, now, and that's why uh, North Korea, they can negotiate anything. They do have the weaponry, they have the hardware, and, uh, you know, pulling out from the Iran agreement may push Iran to follow the same path as North Korea did in, in some 20 years ago, and who knows what's going to happen. Then it will be harder to negotiate with an Iran that already has, uh, you know, uh, equip, you know, hardware equipments, nuclear heads, uh, you know, great uh, ballistic program, missile program, unlike now where you can negotiate with it because it doesn't completely has it.